Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, so we have another exciting Vesta tutorial today. We will be cutting the 110 surface of rutile titanium dioxide. So usually I, I guess it's more popular to be using anatase titanium dioxide, but today we're going to be using rutile. So I'm pretty excited about that. I always like rooting for the underdog. So without further ado, let us cut the 110 surface of rutile titanium dioxide do a basis change and we'll have a new unit cell where now the exposed face is the 1110 face. 110 face, yeah, too many ones. Okay, anyways, let's uh, get started. So I'm gonna start by opening a unit cell for rutile titanium dioxide. So here we have it, where the titanium atoms are these blue atoms and the oxygen are these red atoms. So. The first thing we're going to have to do, and if you've seen my other videos on this, uh, please go check them out. I do this for calcium fluoride, and I also do it for gold. I think I do it for other ones too, maybe ruthenium. Um, anyways, so what we're going to do is actually we're going to expand the crystal, but we're going to do it using the boundary method. We're not going to use the transform method. So to do that, we go over here to boundary. We click on it, and then we're actually going to expand it 4 by 4 by 4 uh, the reason why we do four here and not like three or two is because we have this original unit cell is a little small. So we want to make sure we expand it enough. So press apply and you can see it expands it, but it does not actually change the basis vectors. So if I were to save this uh, as a VASP file or export it as a VASP file rather, uh, the actual unit cell would not change. So anyways, we're going to press OK. Now we're going to press C up here. So we want to view along the C axis. That means the C axis is perpendicular to our plane. Uh, if you have any questions about what any of these buttons up here do or, or along the side, please see my beginner tutorial series. I'm, I'm in the process of building it, but I do have two videos out. Uh, actually, I think maybe four, maybe three, uh, something around there. So, so please go check that out. And if you, by the way, have not subscribed to my channel yet, Please subscribe. I have a lot of videos uh, coming out. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to go to Edit, Lattice Planes, and we're going to go New, and we are going to make the 110 plane. Press Enter. Okay, so there it is. This plane is the 110 plane, but it's not really in a good spot now, so we're actually going to change the distance from origin. I just come here. We're going to make this a 3. Then I'm going to press Enter. And you can see, I don't mean to slam the key so loud, but you can see this is now our plane. So what's important now to do is to rotate it such that this plane is now perpendicular to the page or to the screen. Okay, so just like this. Now, the question is, where is the next periodic atom? And if you look at this titanium here in this plane, the next periodic replica is actually here. So and that's two titanium atoms away. So to draw an additional plane here, we're gonna to go to new, and now instead of being three, we're gonna make it two more, because it's two titaniums away, so we'll make it five. Press enter, and we have now added a new plane. So remember to keep this horizontal, but you can basically see that we're already cutting out our new crystal here. So. Now what we need to do is we need to find a plane perpendicular to this. It just so happens that we can have this be, let's, let's make this uh, green. Uh, we can do the 0, 0, 1 plane. Okay, and we'll make the distance from origin 3 as well. Press enter. Okay, now keeping the yellow plane still perpendicular, we rotate. And you can see now we have this new sort of dimension to our crystal. Now we have to ask ourselves, in this green plane, where is the next periodic replica? It's actually pretty easy to see uh, for this one. It's just right over, so this titanium atom to this one. So now we're going to go new, and we're just going to go 3 to 4, press enter. So it went this way. I'm actually, instead of going 3 to 4, going to go 3 to 2, and press enter. And there we have it there. Okay, so that's perfect. Now we're gonna press okay. 
you are technically supposed to do this for another set of planes, but I find it easier to not do this. So at this point, we're going to scroll out. I'm using the middle mouse and I'm going to press this C again. It's going to bring me back here. So now I'm going to re-rotate it so that the yellow is perpendicular to the plane. I'm going to zoom out and now I'm going to cut everything around the yellow plane. So the yellow plane is right below here. Cut it and I'm going to press delete. Then I'm going to do the same for down here. Okay. Now I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to cut around the green. So we go like this and like this. Now we zoom in using the middle mouse. We have one more dimension to cut and it's pretty straightforward here. You can see where your crystal is. So you can, you could have it be this, but actually I'm going to go ahead and make my new crystal this block here. You can see it. So go ahead and make that yellow perpendicular, scroll out, and we're just going to cut that crystal. Just like that. So this is perfect now. This is our new unit cell. And this face here, this yellow face, this is the 110 surface. So now what we need to do is we need to get the basis transformation vectors from this structure. And here's how you do it. So what you do is you come in to your uh, your computer and uh, you make a text file. I called it basis change. So I come in here and I have some setup that looks like this. So please pause it, set this up in some text file and then resume. Okay, so now that you have this, go back to Vesta. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this corner atom here and we're going to get the coordinates from it. Now that one I just clicked is actually this atom here. So the coordinates are two, one, two. Okay. So I'm going to come back to my file. And so the origin is two, one, two. Now I go back to Vesta and I'm going to define my a, my new a vector in the new unit cell to be from this atom to this atom. So then I double click this atom. You can see it shows up down here. This is now 213. So I go back to my word file or my text file. Oh, sorry, I've already forgotten. 213. 213. Go back to Vesta. Now let's do the, the new B vector. It's going to be 122. Okay, go back to Vesta. Now I do the C vector, three, two, two. Okay, now I have to get the relative vectors in terms of the origin. So what I do is I'm going to subtract the origin from each one of these values. So I, I'll have, here I'll have zero, one, oh, oops, zero, zero, one. So 2 minus 2 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 3 minus 2 is 1. Now the B column, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 minus 2 is 0. For C, I have 3 minus 2 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, and 2 minus 2 is 0. Oops, here, this should most likely be a 0. Okay, perfect. So now this is our transformation matrix. So what we do now is we go back to Vesta. We're going to keep this just how it is. And we're going to open up the original TIO2 uh, Rutile VASP file. Okay. Now we go to edit, edit data, unit cell, transform. And we are now going to, going to write in the transformation matrix we just computed into here. So if we go back to our file, we have 0, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, okay. We have 0, 1, 1, so 0, 1, 1, and 1, 0, 0, so 1, 0, 0. Then press OK, yes, 
Yes. Okay. Apply. There we go. So this is our new unit cell of TiO2, where this surface here, okay, this surface is now the 100 surface. Okay, it's right there. In the original unit cell, this is not the 100 surface. This is actually the 010 zero surface. It's this sort of natural B dimension. Whereas here, it's a different unit cell. So we just have to do one more step. We have to make sure we have the right stoichiometry. So we go to File, Export Data, and we're going to make this TiO2 rutile 110 exposed.basp. Save it. Cartesian coordinates. Now come back to your um, text editor and let's look in, into it. And you can see we have the TiO2 stoichiometry. So in the original one, we had this TiO2 as well. And um, okay, that's it. I hope everyone had a good time. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box. Okay, take care.